The West Tigers have appointed Ivan Cleary as head coach until the end of season 2020. Surprise, surprise. Cleary faced the media this afternoon and spoke to his excitement about the challenge ahead. I'd just like to say how excited I am at this opportunity. Uh, it's great to come to a, a great club like the West Tigers. I think the West Tigers are getting me at my best. Uh, no, I've really no doubt about that. Um, yeah, I think the year, the year off uh, or out of the coaching seat gives you a different perspective. I was fortunate enough to, um, get to spend some time in different areas of the game, and uh, which allows you to get some different pers perspective and see some things differently. So the reality is I'm also another year older, so hopefully uh, a little bit wiser. I'm confident that the, the program that I can help deliver uh, will get results in time. Uh, how long that's going to take uh, is what I will find out over the next weeks and months. My two experiences at two different clubs, uh, Warriors as well, were both uh, you know, building phases. Now, I, I don't, there's clearly some blockages in the program currently at the West Tigers, that's coming out in the field at the moment. But to what extent that is, I'm still not sure. Uh, I certainly come here with complete respect of uh, the past and, and, and the preparation that's been done for this season. Once I spend some time you know, in the, within the four walls of the West Tigers, then I'll be in a better position to, um, to see what path we're going to take. Look, uh, from my discussions, my immediate discussions with management and the board, I was, the first thing I noticed was that uh, there was complete unity and I was really confident about the future of the West Tigers. Uh, in terms of players and the roster, uh, what's most important is those guys um, you know, want to get on the bus and be part of the journey. It's probably something that we'd, uh, we'd like to get sorted out sooner rather than later. I certainly have control over the football team. Um, as far as recruitment goes, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do that in a collaborative process. Um, but certainly the buck will stop with me. There was about a minute 40 there worth of Ivan Cleary press conference and I think he sold me already uh, to talk about the new appointment at the joint venture. We're joined now by Phil Rothfield from the Daily Hello Telegraph. Danny. Fellow bus. How's things? Yeah, really good, thank you. It was a pretty easy appointment to make, wasn't it, Bob? Yeah, great appointment. Should have been made six months ago, though, so he had an off-season. So they didn't want Jason Taylor three weeks in. They should have known that last year. But... With Ivan Cleary, and I really respect Phil Gould like most other people in this game, when he took over at Penrith, he didn't go looking for players, he went looking for a coach. The first man he signed, Ivan Cleary, because he sees him as a builder, mm -hmm. someone who can start at ground zero, someone who can do a really great job with a footy leadership, and I think it's a wonderful appointment. I'm not saying they'll make the eight this year, but I think he's capable of turning them back into a contender. Yeah, look, the big thing there is he's capable of turning them around and he knows, he knows what pegs to put in what hole. And unfortunately, some clubs, they, they try to rebuild clubs and they don't know what's going on. They, they have a grab at whatever players are available. Ivan Clear is very deliberate about the way he builds a club and he's very, very clear on what he thinks uh, is value for money within the club and how you can actually structure your salary cap. That's so important in the modern game is how you structure that and, how, and, and that you do get it right. And when he first got to Penrith, he one of the first things he did was look at the players and how so many of the payments mm. were out of whack. And that's what he'll do now. And it's particularly important, given they've got four players at the club right now off contract, all demanding pretty good money. So he can walk in straight away and say, you know what, guys, too much for this guy. Give this guy a little bit more Let's make sure we get this guy. Mm. And they, they'll get it right. You, and the Tigers fans can have real confidence now that whatever decisions are made mm. out of this, it's the best ones for the club. And it's yeah. not just been bullied into yeah. decision-making because they've been felt the public pressure. It's so true. I mean, Buzz, you knew Jack Gibson really well. One of his yeah. most famous sayings was, the best coaches are the best recruiters. You know, yep. And to survive in the you know, cut-and-thrust world of NRL, you need to know who can play. Mm. And it seems, seems simple... But not only do you need to know who can play, but who can play together. And then on top of that as a head coach, which I'm assuming is part of the responsibility Ivan Cleary wants as the, as the head of the football department, is to create an environment then where the best talent can thrive. Well, that was That's, one of the issues sorry. at the club, wasn't it? That, that why it took so long. Why they didn't just go out and assign him straight away? It's because Ivan wanted clear control over the retention and recruitment at the club. And they didn't buy into that straight well, away? Well, they were a new governance club. They, were, they weren't going to just hand a control over to a coach and give it all to him. Guys, but I yeah. wouldn't tolerate that. The interesting thing they could have done is appoint an untried coach like Trent Robinson at the Roosters, who went on to win all those minor premierships. Yeah. Craig Bellamy had never coached before he took over Melbourne Storm. 
Yeah. And there was a big rap and big support for Andrew Webster, but they needed someone who'd done a rebuild, someone who'd turned the Warriors into a premiership force, mm. someone who has built Penrith to where they are today. Anthony Griffin, when he came in, took over a really healthy footy club. Yeah. And that is exactly what the West Tigers needed. Yeah, but you talk about Craig Bellamy there. I think it's important to remember, Craig Bellamy actually knocked back West Tigers' job. He did. Way back in the day. And the reason yeah. was because the club was too unstable way back then. Now, eventually, Tim Sheen's got the job, went on and did a magnificent mm. job. Craig Bellamy showed the fruits of what his decision was by going to a club like Melbourne that was far more mm. stable, and he was then able to just do what he was able to do, they tolerated or well, they allowed him that little bit of latitude to ease his way into the job because the club was in such a good state. So then what happens, Craig Bellamy obviously went on and did what we all know he's now done. He's turned that club into the, uh, I think, the best football club of any code in Australia. Interesting point that Justin Pascoe, the CEO, made today was that the senior players at the West Tigers weren't consulted about Ivan Cleary. Yeah, no, no, do you say they should have been? No, shouldn't have been. No, no, neither do I. These, the senior players have had too much say mm. and they've had too much media about their contracts. Mm. This was a decision for Justin Pascoe and the board to make. Mm. They need new, strong leadership. They don't need someone who the players are going to be comfortable with. They need someone who's going to challenge the players. They need someone who's going to call Aaron Woods in and the fullback to Desco and say, guys, I'm desperate for you to stay. Let's do a deal. And then he's got to go to the two halves. Mm. They've got to say, guys, if you want to stay at the West Tigers, tell me now or we'll go elsewhere. Mm. Yeah. And he has that standing in the game, Ivan, to address them in that manner. Yeah. All right, so what about the board and the executive at the West Tigers? They've come under fire and copped a lot of criticism after Jason Taylor was sacked. If they get this one right, if Ivan Cleary proves to be uh, the brilliant appointment we all believe that he's going to be, yeah. do we need to back off and say, job well Not done? Not really, because no. what other choices were there? Who else could they have got, really, in, in real terms? It's not like they had a choice of five and they've hit on the right one. There was one established coach out there that could do this job that they yeah. need to be done. And that's supposedly... Yeah, but Kenny, yeah, well, the, the Kenny I, I do think you'd need... If this is an ex a successful appointment, they've done, a, they've done the right thing. They could have gone in other directions. They could have given Webster a go. They could have gone for oh, a Trent could have, but, but they could have gone in the real world, who's going to do that? In the real world, yeah, if Ivan yeah. Clear is there available, you're yeah. not going to go and point Andrew Webster. Well, well, to, well, use, you know to use one of your words... Someone who's clueless or a board yeah. that's clueless would have done that. Yeah, well, but maybe future, they're learning on the run. In well, they future, are learning on the run, but they haven't got it exactly right because they did come out and say, you know what, mm. we're a new governance board and we've got to go through the proper process to get the right guy. So they made all the noise about doing this new un you know, official way of going about things but didn't interview anybody else. And nor should they have. And look, I'm not going to bag Marina Go ever again while the board is set up like it is because there are five West directors mm. who hold the balance of power, make every single decision at that club. Can we hold you to that? Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah? You can. Sure. Absolutely. Can we